Hey, watch lovers, Brad from Brent Miller Jewelers. I had someone reach out in the comment sections of a video asking if I could compare a 34 millimeter Tudor Royal to the 36 millimeter Breitling Chronomat and uh, happy to oblige. Again, I, I do take requests when we have stuff in stock and I'm more than happy to help out. So um, let's get into the case dimensions on these two. And I do apologize. This is the only 34 millimeter Tudor Royal I had in stock. Um, and uh, I did not have a, I was hoping I had a white dial 36 so I could kind of show you white versus white here, but uh, I thought the blue would do. So the Tudor Royal, I measured diagonally across the case above the crown and even 34 millimeters. I measured it and then the same thing across that notch bezel and even 34 millimeters. And the crystal on the Tudor, 27.3 millimeters is what I got from the three to the nine. On the Breitling, I measured again above that crown, diagonally across the case, and even 36 millimeters, so uh, about two millimeters larger, or exactly from what I measured, two millimeters larger than the Royal. Um, and then again, the same 36 millimeters across the uh, rotating bezel. And the crystal on the Breitling, I measured at 28.5, so about a millimeter larger on the crystal. Um, and partly maybe because of the rotating bezel, I'm not sure, you still have a notch bezel here, so again, um, not two millimeters larger like the case, just a millimeter larger on the crystal. Uh, moving further along, we have a case thickness on the Tudor at 10.2. Breitling, almost identical, 10.3. I think visually the Tudor looks thicker just because it's a smaller case, so it's going to be kind of more compact or, you know, it's shorter, so it's going to look a little squattier, I think. But again, almost identical case thickness. And then the lug-to-lug -lug on the Royal, 41.2 millimeters versus 43.3 so again about two millimeters longer on the uh, the chronomat 36. Um, the royal has again from the widest part of that last link 21 millimeter uh, we'll call it quote unquote lug width and that tapers all the way down to 14 millimeters at this last link you have a deployment style clasp and then the the clasp itself here at the widest part is 16 so it's essentially 21 from the widest link down to 14 and then 16 here again the clasp is pretty small so it's not very wide at 16. compared to the chronomat again has a 18 millimeter lug width so you can see the integrated case here is actually 18 at the lug width however that first link i measured it is the exact same 21 so both of them at the widest part of that link are 21 millimeters and then the Breitling tapers down to 16 millimeters, and we have a butterfly style a butterfly style clasp on the Breitling versus the just deployment style on the Tudor. So again, 16 um, on the on the Breitling. Both of them solid stainless steel case backs. The Tudor is the T601. Uh, both of these are going to be like modified Salida ETA movements. Uh, I believe we're working with Salida on the Tudor. Um, the Breitling, maybe ETA, or maybe Salida as well, or, or e modified ETA. But uh, regardless, they are um, not, neither of them, in-house movements. So again, the Tudor is the T601, 38 hours of power reserve. The Breitling is the Breitling B10 with four more, power, or four more hours of power reserve at 42 hours. So again, very similar there. Uh, the weight on both of these on the full bracelet, 103.5 grams on the Tudor versus 103.9. So, I mean, again, almost identical uh, in weight on the uh, the Breitling. Very similar. Uh, the Breitling does wear a little bit larger, but, but the Tudor being a little bit thicker, I think it has a little bit more presence. Um, last but not, or certainly not least, both of them signed crowns. However, only the Tudors is screw down. The Breitling's is not. And I did not measure the crowns, but I will say this. The, the Breitling 36 Chronomat crown is very small. Um, at times, almost have an issue like trying to pull it out and to set the time. Uh, the Tudors is uh, a little bit larger. It was easier for me to manipulate. And again, does screw down. Um, water resistance, if I didn't mention already, was 100 meters on both of these. So again, very similar. I can see why someone's maybe comparing these. Uh, price points. So this model with the diamonds in mother of pearl dial, 3,200. However, if you're looking at just the steel version, uh, that is 2,350 on just the steel versus the Breitling coming in at 5,100. So nearly double the cost. Um, so let me know what you think about that. Uh, if you have a strong preference either way, again, both kind of have that integrated case and bracelet, or at least the look of it. So let me throw these on wrist again real quick. I, I 
prefer slightly larger. I mean, for me, on my six and three quarter inch wrist, I do like the 38 millimeter Royal. Um, the 36 Chronomat for me, as much as I like it, I, I'd love to see a 38. The 40 for me is maybe just a bit big in that newer GMT. And this 36 is maybe a little smaller than I'd prefer. But again, if you're shopping these, I'm, I want to make sure I'm doing a doing both of these justice for the, the individual who asked to see these compared. I didn't mention both of them, uh, no micro adjustments. It does look like the chronomat here is a push pin with the Rolu bracelet, no screws. Um, so you have a collar, pin and collar system versus the Tudor. You do have removable uh, links by screws. So hopefully this helps uh, seeing these on my wrist. If you're still on the fence, feel free to reach back out. If there's a, a view that I did not provide or something I didn't go over. Again, you do have a rotating bezel on the chronomat, unidirectional. Both of them have the date window. Uh, I do like the date window better at six o'clock on the Breitling, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, compared to the three o'clock placements on the Tudor. But again, I really don't think there's a bad option here. I think aesthetically, it comes down to which one uh, do you prefer? Do you like Romans um, for your hour indicators? So let me hit the lights real quick, give you a quick loom shot. Again, you got minute hand and hour hand on the Tudor. And you got your full markers, hour markers, and your loom pip here on your bezel. So Thanks for viewing. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Any questions you may have, feel free to email me, brad at brentlmiller.com, and we'll see you in the next video.